Hey everyone, welcome to it. This is The Asylum. I'm Novella and I am joined today with Stan from Preacher. Introduce yourself, Stan. Hi there guys, how's it going today? I'm Stan, I play guitar and sing in Preacher and joining to chat some band stuff and whatever else comes up today. Nice, so the rest of your band, uh, they're out about doing other podcasts and just kicking butt because Y'all are killing it. So y'all are super busy and I always say that's a good problem to have. Um, recently, um, I had y'all on my award show as a band where we, uh, a show where we spotlight the bands and we had you on there just getting y'all a little introduced to everything uh, leading up to a new album you have coming out. And I was just wondering if y'all wanted to talk on that a little bit or are we kind of keeping that secret for now? Sure. Yeah. Um, so this uh, single that we just released is called Live Laugh Lobotomy. That's going to be the first single um, off of our album, which will hopefully be coming out like early 2023. Um, we may have one or two more singles dropping before then. Um, it was a really crazy process this time around because um, pretty much everything we were uh, DIY. So we record ourselves, we do all the mixing, mastering, all that in-house. So we don't have outside producers um, that help us with anything. So it's a lot more work on our end, but I think more rewarding at the end because you can kind of, you know how you want to sound, so you can make it sound how you are happy with rather than trying to tell somebody else what you want it to sound like. But we were given, um, we were given a deadline of August 5th to have the album done. And when we were given the deadline, we were not done with it and we had three weeks. And we managed to finish writing it and recording it and we met the deadline on the day. And I think probably some of the best work that we've done. And I'm really excited for you guys to hear that. Do you think having that deadline helped make that better or do you feel like it might have hindered that in some way? I think that challenge, that challenge, like, all right, we're going to get after it. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it helped. Um, I think it really put like a fire under our ass and, you know, we just like, we, we have to do this. We all have jobs. So we had to make it happen in the time. And I think it really um, pushed us to that next level. So uh, are all of you from Reno, Nevada? We are. I know that's where the band, uh, the page says y'all are from sometimes they all like come from everywhere so y'all met in reno how'd, how'd y'all meet uh personally and then what made this band form from there so all of us have been playing music since we were like 14 between 14 and 15 16 um and we've we've all been in like the local band scene over the years playing in like different bands alongside each other and everything and um me, Nate, and Chris actually were in a band together before who did um, like a national touring stuff. And then Alan, our drummer, was in another hardcore band and they were doing some pretty big like festivals and stuff back in the day. So we kind of knew who he was before that. And um, there was a period where we were kind of on a hiatus. Nobody was doing anything. And a good friend of ours was like, hey, this guy's looking to play music again and he's heard that you guys are not doing anything would you want to meet up with him and he kind of made that conversation happen uh, and that turned into basically us meeting for lunch and ended up being almost a four-hour lunch where we just hit it off really well and ended up exchanging a bunch of demos and i think we had our first band practice a week or two after that and we had our first song like recorded at our first practice and it's just been basically nonstop since then. Well, that worked out for you then. Just to <laughs> hit it off and just get rolling with it. I know, it was, um, I don't know, but I assume most people when they do bands, there's kind of like a, a collaboration of like a lot of the same things that you get along with, enjoy, you know, have the same taste in. Um, but there's probably a little bit mixed in um, different. Do y'all usually have a very similar taste or is it kind of give and take with different weird variety because i know with me i'm all over the place with mine <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of all over the place like there's definitely a couple bands that we all agree on that we all really like as a whole like um architects um polaris counterparts those are kind of like 
probably the top three that I could say all of us are really into, but our tastes kind of vary. Um, our drummers into like the more hardcore style. Uh, me and Chris were more into like the metal core, like some darker stuff and Nate listens to like a lot of hip hop. So it's kind of just a fusion of interests and somehow it works. <laughs> now uh, the lead singer, what's his name? Nathan. That is Nathan. Okay. So yeah. the picture I seen, he's wearing Britney Spears. And I know some people do that yeah. out of, out of uh, I guess, meme worth or laughing purposes, but pretty sure you got to like some Britney Spears though. <laughs> oh yeah. No, he, he, he is definitely the most extravagant member. <laughs> he's got a, a, a plethora of shirts like that. Um, at our last show that we played uh, in Roseville with a Skylet Drive, he had a Super Mario suit. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, is that where he was on the countertop of a bar? Yeah. Yes, I seen that. I was like, hey, they're letting them get after it up there. Yeah. So was that in uh, Nevada as well? Uh, that was in Roseville, California. Oh, I mean, you may have said that. I don't listen to good. Uh, you had said that you y'all all participated beforehand in the the local scene. I've been to Nevada, but not as being able to hang out and do that kind of stuff. Is do they have a pretty good rock scene up there? I would say, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty strong in a lot of areas. Like the indie scene's pretty big around here, um, and then the rock and metal scenes pretty big too. That's awesome. I don't know if I would have thought that, but also I don't really know the area. But it's it's really cool that you had that, you know, there for you, that opportunity, because sometimes it's difficult to get that in your community. Yeah, I think the biggest struggle right now is after COVID, a lot of the all ages venues closed down. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, I guess, the struggle now is like a lot of the places that you would play are 21 plus. So it's really hard to like get music out to the local fan base that are younger. Yeah, when it comes to some of the, I guess, the harder music metalcore, I know anyone, everyone can like it, but I've seen to see that it's a lot of the younger folk. And it's mm -hmm. usually those two who like to come out and support the local scene a lot more, too. Uh, I guess because they just have a lot of energy, which is great because sometimes I need some energy myself and I just don't have it. I hosted a show Tuesday night and it was, I think I was the oldest person in the building <laughs> <laughs> down in Nashville, downtown. Uh, a lot of young bands come out there and killing it. I, I love seeing that, though, just. The local places and these these bands come together and perform locally and everybody's supporting that's great now um when y'all dropped live laugh lobotomy that was on october 28th so right before halloween i thought that was pretty pretty well um iconic ironic made, made good sense to drop it then um i personally associate lobotomy with horror because it sounds it is horrifying yeah <laughs> And then y'all's video. Um, I love the song. I am a chicken, though. I'm a big coward. And so as soon as your uh, clown popped up there, it's like, mm-mm, not for <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, what's what's behind that song there? And then, and then the video creation, which, what was the brainchild on that? Um, I would say it's kind of along the lines of, like, American Psycho. Yeah. Where it, it kind of tells the story of a dude who he's doing his normal nine to five job. He's going through life. He's doing his mundane stuff that's not really interesting. It's kind of like sucking the soul out of him. And eventually it kind of drives him to snap and start being a crazy murderer guy. And But he doesn't remember what he does after he does it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a twist on that because he's doing all this stuff in his normal life and then his nightlife is something completely different and he's waking up like disoriented and tired and doesn't really know what's going on that is actually one of the the tropes with serial killers is, is that they have the double life they they oh i'm gonna do my regular nine to five a lot of them are married which blows my mind how they get married and sometimes several times that you ha always keep faith that if these people can find love so could you because they be doing that <laughs> and then yeah. their other their other half their life the double life is is the serial killing um based on the clown so it was any of the inspiration gacy is that what we're leaning toward are y'all even into that kind of stuff serial killers and uh true crimes i think it was just he i think he went to the store and basically found like the scariest <laughs> mask he could find that looks good. I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> yeah, it just it just happened to work out. It was kind of all luck at that point. Hey, well, I 
I'm huge in the true crime and all that stuff. So when I was watching it, that was the vibes I was getting. I was like, I wonder if uh, that's what they're into as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I watch a lot of horror on my end. I just finished the Dahmer series not too long ago, and that was pretty intense. I, I finished it, yeah, not too long ago myself. Uh, I'm down with it. I, well, I listen to the podcast all the time and do a lot of research. Uh, I had a little mini podcast myself where we discuss things like that. I don't mind it. Like, I know it's not great, <laughs> but I think it's very interesting. And I watched it literally at just one go. And my sister, she says, I can't say it can be forever. I was like, what? She said, I didn't even finish the first episode. Psh, come on now. <laughs> I guess I'm a little desensitized at this point. <laughs> Yeah, it's just interesting to, like, try and even wrap your head around, like, mm -hmm. their mentality and mindset doing these things. Like, and it, it, he, he was kind of, I don't know, a different, a little different, I would say, because I feel like there wasn't, I mean, there may have been remorse, but, like, he knew what he was doing was bad. And, like, I, I don't know, I feel like there was a little bit more humanity to him than, like, some of the other guys, so. That was kind of an interesting take on it. Yeah, most the so the shows stuff that I listen to, they they do feel like um, like they're actually more of a humanity because he didn't want to do it. It was more of a of a mission, and but he had to be drunk to do it. That's what he always says. Like he was just get drunk, go do the thing, but um, doesn't excuse it. But <laughs> yeah. it's still it's very interesting. It wasn't out of necessarily just one one thing. Um, words. <laughs> I had all the things. Well, that was actually one of the things I was going to discuss as as a whole um, with with y'all who who liked what kind of horror. But you and me, we just go cool discuss. You watch uh, horror movies in general, or just like the real life things? Because I watch a lot. Oh uh, no! The other thing is, like I said, I'm, I'm a scaredy cat. I don't like horror movies, but I love true crime. I don't know why. <laughs> How I can't do one or the other, but like I don't do zombies. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I watch no zombie movies. Uh, I might I do some supernatural and like shark stuff, but sharks aren't scary; they're more fun. <laughs> you ever watch uh, Mind Hunter? I have not. I've, I've like looked it up to to watch it, but I couldn't get it on any kind of service. But oh, it may okay. be on a streaming service now. But they talk about it all the time on the podcast. I like to listen to. Yeah, that one's pretty interesting. It, like they kind of meet a lot of the serial killers in the show and interview them and a lot of it's based on like true stuff that happened and true people so it's but the actors in it are fantastic and actresses yeah the, the ones where they actually sit down with them that blows my mind um i think i would like to but at the same time you never know you might actually just freeze up but there's a lady like she is just a professional in doing that specifically and she's talked to several of them i was like that actually sounds really cool i might have to try <laughs> that someday <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I feel like it'd be intense. It's like knowing that the person sitting across from you has literally killed people, like m maliciously. Even you know, it's like I don't know how I would approach that conversation. Yeah, I, I feel like I have a list of things to ask, but then you probably be like, ah, never mind. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <I'll> leave now. <laughs> So I, yeah, um, with this release coming up, y'all are hitting the road soon. Are you doing multiple tours or is it just a show y'all have coming up? Uh, so yeah. right now Ooh, we soon. have we have two in January. We got one in Bishop, California, and then we're doing the Whiskey A Go Go um, at the end of January in L.A. And then we're doing Rockefellers in February, which is also in L.A. And then I believe we're doing a three day run coming up in April. Um, I believe it's NorCal and Reno date. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna come out our way uh, east? <laughs> yeah, Never eat soggy waffles. Uh, <laughs> we're we're in uh, the Tennessee area. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we pass through there on our way to Virginia. We'd love to actually next time plan a tour. We we toured on our way out there, but we only had certain states that we were able to do. But we would love to play a show out there in Nashville. It'd be awesome. Oh, we definitely have you in Nashville. We can hit you up with that. Uh, you said on your way to Virginia. That was because y'all went to Blue Ridge Rock Festival this year. Yeah. Um, and that's actually where I, I did see y'all not face to face, but uh, y'all were on stage doing the thing. Uh, which stage were you on? I don't remember. We were on Heart Support. Heart Support. So that was on top of the hill. Yep. Yeah. 
fuck that hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, did y'all ever have, did you have to go up and down it? Or did oh yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, well, well, we, we <laughs> camped. So we got there a day early and we like full on roughed it in the tents and everything. Like we, I mean, we had, we had our bus and everything, but we didn't really sleep in there much. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the walking was insane. Like that place is so massive. It's like the whole thing, probably three to four miles across. Yeah, they said the racetrack, and I was thinking, heck yeah, we'll be like in the middle of the racetrack or something. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. And we get there, and oh my gosh, the walking, which we walk a lot with all the different places we go, but that hill, and then the even the re- the other hill going down to the main stages, it's kind of rough. But the the hill, everybody knows it. The run up and down, yep. covered in hay, that was a death trap. There was so many good bands down there. Uh, I fell in a hole. Or several holes. Oh, it wasn't the same hole because that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> Which I, I maybe did fall in the same hole a few times because I'm very clumsy. But by the sixth time I went through a hole, I was like, I can't go up and down this hill anymore. So I went down there for like the half two bands, and then otherwise I was limping around the rest of the time. <laughs> so is that the biggest, um, I guess, venue or performance that you have done so far? By far, yeah. Was so it nerve wracking? I- Yes and no. It was like, I feel like the nerves and the excitement were kind of like fighting each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's kind of how it is with normal shows, but this was just like, I I don't know. I, I, I didn't feel like the normal stage fright that I normally do. But then it was like, when I got up there, I was like, what am I? I I don't know. I felt like I blacked out a couple of times or something. (laughs) I bet it's just so exciting going to something like that. And just so many people. And that's it's really cool, too, though, because all these different people getting introduced to you who probably, especially from all the way out there, didn't even know who you were. And they're like, oh, hey, let's check out this new thing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure I looked at every single band on that. And we are by far the smallest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was really excited. Um, on the same stage that you shared, uh, speaking of Nashville bands, uh, the other L.A., uh, they're a, a popular band out here where we are. And I was super excited that they got to come out there as well. It's really neat watching like the growth and like, it's going to be exciting watching your growth as well. Do, do y'all plan on having any festivals uh, in 2023? I'm hoping that we're able to come back to Blue Ridge again for 2023. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what else might happen in that time. Um, but right now I would say 2023 is gearing up to be our busiest year. And this last or 2022 so far has been the busiest year. We were pretty much nonstop playing shows from January until October 15th. And we're taking a couple of weeks off to do family stuff and work on new music and whatever else may pop up in that time. But it's and, looking like it's going to be busy. Oh, well, we, we had that same problem this year with it being the busiest, um, really only being like year two, year one and a half, but it is a good problem to have. I like just got to keep pushing through it. Like I said, y'all are, y'all are going to kill it and do great. Um, so very excited for you. you. It was 2020 when you formed, right? Is that correct? We actually formed uh, at the end of 2017. Oh, okay. So it's been, we just hit five years as of September 1st. Gotcha. I, I don't know where I got that number. It just makes stuff up. Made myself sound smart and then look dumb. <laughs> well, I know, I know, like the albums on Spotify. Some of them say like 2020, like multiple albums, and that was because we had to. We originally had like Preacher as our handle, mm-hmm. and then there was a bunch of like rap artists and like religious artists, and their releases kept coming up on our profile. So that's why we had to add the NV. So we switched everything over and then uploaded it. So when it uploaded, it changed all those dates as like the release date so that might be i'm actually gonna throw this that. up here at the bottom if y'all want to locate them their link tree down here or just in general looking up this preacher in v because i had the same problem trying to find y'all on socials um whenever i i had you say but when i just go type it in i was like where is this ad <laughs> so i just yeah. go right through and follow the links that i had uh but yes yeah, put that NV on there and y'all can find them uh, definitely hit them up on all the socials, share, like, subscribe, all that good jazz. N- now, that being said, they'll talk about Preacher because 
you probably know what my brain went when I read it and maybe yeah. a lot of other people, does it have anything to do with the comic book? <laughs> Where it doesn't. It came from? No. Um, actually, when we started, Nate already had the name in his head. And then one day um, we were like, oh, what should we name this project? And he's like, well, how about Preacher? And all of us are like, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's, it's funny how sometimes there's this huge intricate story about where a name comes from and other times it's just there's that name now. <laughs> well, and it's funny too because I, I feel like a lot of people spend so much time on that decision and that's like this elaborate story like you were saying or they got it from somewhere specific. I would say like that's probably the easiest decision that we've made as a band. <laughs> and all the rest, like even just day-to-day -day decisions like, hey, uh, are you down to release this that day? Like, that's more of an intricate story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like my, my name, Novella, a lot of people, you know, oh, is that because you like, you know, these Vedic soap operas or blah, blah, blah. Like, that's literally just my name. Like, there's nothing special. <laughs> my, it was my great, great grandmother's and they gave it to me. There's no intricacy to it. Just It was given to me. I did find it interesting that it means short novel and like I like to read and write. But other than that, no, it was just given to me. Is I like your name. Thanks. My my mom gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not nothing special. Don't have any like fun intricate stage name or anything. Maybe one day I'll get me a real fun thing going on there, but just just for now, Novella's fine. <laughs> what would it be if you if you did have an alias? If I did have one? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm really bad at things, so it'd probably be something really stupid if I came up <laughs> with it. I've um, I, my friend shared me this one thing that I I thought would be really funny because I get made fun of a lot for my my accent. I'm like, I don't even have an accent. Said, so, yeah, you do. That country comes out. <laughs> it, there's this thing that I never heard of before was y'all alternative, and I thought that was really cute because nice. y'all for the country, but then alternative for rock and roll. I was like, that could be a thing one day, maybe. <laughs> that works. It really it's, works. I have, it's weird. Like I said, my, my tastes are so up and down. I, I do have old country, metal, hardcore metal. Uh, I like my um, booty shaking music, my, my savage girl. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, my new thing now, bimbo core. I didn't know it was a thing, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> so who knows? I'm going to get an alias in it. It probably won't be something I make up for myself, and it may be terrible. I get made fun of a lot here at the station, which is fine. I like to laugh at myself. So, <laughs> do you have a jokester in your group? Because uh, Diego is most definitely ours. He's the he's a prankster around here. Yeah, it's it's definitely Nate. I, for I sure. knew it. I knew you were going to say Nate. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying earlier that he's a uh, just a, a very broad character definitely the most eccentric i don't think i've met a nate or a nathan that isn't i think it just comes with a name they're all that way <laughs> but we we wouldn't have it any other way i i couldn't oh. i couldn't imagine him being any other way it'd, it'd just be weird so is he the one who instigated y'all's uh tortilla challenge yes oh <laughs> that makes sense oh yeah he just texted us uh what was a day or two ago with another bag of them and he's like round two just <laughs> just shows up with tortillas <laughs> yeah so that that he... challenge is where y'all uh well i didn't know the whole concept like we all were wearing like bandanas and y'all were slapping each other or something well tell everybody what it was because they they may not know what the okay. tortilla challenge is it's it's kind of like i guess it's some viral tiktok thing where you literally just you drink water and you have to hold it in your mouth without spitting it out and then you slap each other in the face with actual tortillas and then whoever spits out their water last or doesn't spit it out, I should say, is the winner. I had seen the clip. That's why I was getting it wasn't the blindfold. It was on TikTok where we'd seen them slapping each other. And someone had said about me and Diego do it. And it's like, no, nah, neither one of us handle like getting in the face well. It would have turned real violent real quick. <laughs> uh, we wrestle and stuff, but that, that's completely different. But I seen y'all doing that. I was like, what are they doing with that water? And and then it made sense. Do they hurt? I mean, it's <laughs> you know those are just trying not to laugh i think we were being nice to each other that day mm -hmm. <laughs> uh I, I have a feeling that round two is going to be a little bit rougher how did you decide who was gonna pair up with who i think there was like a there was a vendetta that needed to be hashed out with nate and chris <laughs> it's, it's an <laughs> it's an age-old tale that goes back probably over a decade 
I'm smacking you with a tortilla. It's going down today. <laughs> it's brotherly love. And he, he lost, though, immediately, right? He was the first one to yeah. it was. Yeah. <laughs> I can see him not being able to not laugh. <laughs> or not, yeah, <laughs> to not laugh. Yeah, and, I, you know, I, the whole time I was like, oh, why are we doing this? This is, this is super <laughs> dumb. And then, like, when we were doing it, it was actually really fun. <laughs> There's so many of those that I see on there and I hate being like a TikTok scroller, but then you get sucked into it and you do mm. see really fun things like that. Like, oh, I do. I want to try that. Yeah, we're we're new to the whole TikTok thing. So we're still like learning about that and seeing what people are doing there and trying to figure out how to integrate into that as well. Yeah, so I, I had your um, your link up here and I'll throw it up there again. What all will they find on there that they can go check you out on? Um, so we have, I think, a YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we have our website. We have merchandise. Uh, what else we got? We have some podcast interviews up there. Um, and I think some links to, like, directly to new music videos that we've done and stuff. Yes, I, I believe there was some uh, additional interviews on there that would be really fun for people to check out. And definitely the the link to the new video for um live laugh lobotomy i have to stop and say it very <laughs> very directly what i'm thinking that i'm gonna say I, I, I just love the 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 pun basically um changing it up from live laugh love <laughs> it, it's so hard to because like all of our song names they they never start out as the name they always start out as some ridiculous name like everything we've ever done so when we're talking to each other about our songs we talk to each other referring to those names. And then when people are like overhearing, they're like, what are they talking about? So I, I believe Mora is one. Yeah. What, what was its name? You that was, uh, that was Rawberry. Rawberry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't all berries raw? And then uh, Live Laugh Lobotomy was Glover 64. <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> it's, so there's a old Nintendo 64 game called Glover. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it I it never fails that when I'm doing an interview, we'll get to uh, video games. I think it's just innate in in our in this genre industry that everybody's gonna have some kind of relation to video games. There's a lot of us nerds. What's your favorite? <laughs> Ooh, um, my personal favorite probably Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. There you go. Heck yeah. And I, I hate to put you on the spot like that because every time I get that question, what's your favorite insert anything? I never have an answer. I do not do lists. I don't do favorites because I can't. <laughs> and depending on the day, it changes. Uh, I will say probably, though, if you're going to down audit Final Fantasy 7, just because that was like my first game as a child growing up. And I do have three tattoos on my body. Of Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> nice. And my last two cars were named after Final Fantasy 7 characters. So I should probably say that one. I have this six foot long Vincent Valentine in frame poster on my wall. And it's funny that you said uh, Zelda because, again, old jokester at the station, he always comes in and says, Look, there's Zelda. Knowing damn well it's not Zelda. <laughs> and it's like, it's funny because he doesn't even understand the pun, too about Link and Zelda all the time getting uh -huh. confused. Like, and you're doing it with a completely different game. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Did you ever watch the uh, the Final Fantasy VII movie? Have I? <laughs> I absolutely. I, I bought every like new edition that came out because uh, they had like, different cuts and things in there. Oh, yeah. I quote it a lot. I'm, awesome. I'm a big, big nerd. <laughs> oh, yeah. We played a drinking game with it one time. Uh, and I think we must have already been a little drunk before we started because I was like, oh, cool. Uh, every time there's a gunshot, take a drink. Because in my <laughs> brain, I'm thinking, ah, Vincent and Barrett are the only two with guns. And the first intro is like all of the little um, spawns having a shoot off with the Turks. Like, oh, no. <laughs> 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 new rules, new rules. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, I absolutely love that movie. And then there's the other one. It's not based off any of the games, though. Um, it's like a space-based Final Fantasy. It's, it wasn't bad. It just what had nothing to do with the, the games. What are they on, like 14 now or something? I don't know, 15 or so. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> there was someone the other day posted up. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but they just used the abbreviations FF, whatever number they were talking about. 
And as you know, with as many Fast and the Furious as are coming out, people are probably getting confused as to what the FF is for. Which which one are you talking about? <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy or Fast and the Furious? Right. <laughs> They're overwhelming. I also seen a meme that's on my video games. It said, oh, you're not a game nerd. Name 20 games. Like that whole thing. Like You have to name something to know it. And the guy was like, Final Fantasy. And he just left it at that because he's like, oh. Touche. <laughs> technically, it's not wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I know you have your um, your show coming up soon with the different dates that you're doing. In that interim or coming up, I know you said you have some breaks with family and stuff. Is there going to be a new new album, some new new music coming in between that? Or are y'all going to take a little break on that as well? Mm, I, I have a, like a a problem. And it's uh, the problem is writing music all the time. Yeah. So stop. we will never, ever, ever not have music ever. Always working on something. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying. I mean, my goal would be to have the album done before the next one comes out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like during COVID, I kind of dove into like the recording realm and taught myself how to do all that. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of been able to help out with some of the releases and stuff as far as like recording goes now. And I think I wrote 40 songs or so oh just, my goodness. Like <laughs> just for the band during that time. And then I think I wrote like 20 of my own. So it's just nonstop. If I have an idea, I go in here and I just, I, I lay it down, send it to the guys and it's just a nonstop roll of songs. So you do um, music and lyrics? Yeah. So typically, like, I'll do um, all the music on my computer. I'll program drums and all of that stuff. And then when I send it to everybody, they'll kind of take their spin on it or add their little flair to it. Um, and then Nate and I kind of split up lyrics. So he'll have, like, a whole song, and he'll send it to me, and he'll leave choruses open for me, or vice versa. I'll send him choruses for a song that I have, and then he'll write around that. So we kind of write to each other. Mm -hmm. but we've we i think we've only sat down and wrote together like once we're not like ever really in the same room and it's kind of cool because usually he'll have some idea of what the song's about and i'll have a completely different other idea about it but then when you put them together they they work together there definitely must be some chemistry there to be able to do that and then it still come together and be cohesive that's really cool and it's also really cool too because um Chris, I would say he's he's not our newest member. He's been in the band since um, around COVID. But since he joined, he's been contributing a lot of music too. And then um, Alan, he our drummer, he can also play guitar really well. And he'll lay down a bunch of guitar parts and songs. And so everybody's writing and contributing. And it's really it's really cool. Well, you said you're doing everything DIY in, in the house. That to me is impressive because... I, one, I have no idea how to do any of that, but I know there's so many moving parts and a lot of bands are doing that. Uh, and during COVID, and I also seen, I believe it was on your website, people, one of the suggestions for if you like this type of music, you'll like um, <clears throat> Preacher. And uh, Beartooth, their lead singer, he did, I think, every single bit of theirs during COVID, just built it all together. But that's insane to me uh, to do all that. Um, do y'all plan on always staying uh, in-house or are you looking to try to get fine you know i would say if we can stay independent as long as possible that would be the best um i mean i would love to keep producing ourselves as long as we can i lost stan there's stan
I am so I'm sorry just... about that. Oh, you're fine. I'll I'll edit it up. Working now? Yeah, it's working. Okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. Like I can cut it, uh, fix it there. Um, words. Oh, we were saying you you would like to stay uh, independent. Yeah, I think um, probably as long as we possibly can. I mean, if we ever get to that point where we physically cannot handle everything that's going on within our circle and team, then that would probably be the time where we would take that step. I know a lot of people are either trying to go back to being independent or also remaining that way as well. I think it is uh, people's primary choice at this point. And it's, it's so hard now, especially like people aren't buying music. So it's, you have to kind of find ways to sustain yourself. And then when you have a label that comes in and takes 70% of that, Mm -hmm. It makes it really, really difficult to to actually do that or make a living or be able to continue to float yourself. And when you're, and when you're doing all that work, it, it's kind of uh, frustrating not to, you know, have the majority of everything you put into it, especially when that's just your passion, you know, and all that. It's yours. It's your baby. <laughs> you want to keep, yeah. keep all of that, uh, you know, owning it. But also, yeah, the, you want your residuals because... You put a lot into it. You want to get something back. Well, that too. And I, I feel like it, it'd be hard to want to give up some of like the writing to someone else too. Like I don't want to go into like a producer and have them write half the album for us. You know, I, I would never want that. If we worked with a producer, I feel like it would be more to enhance what we're doing or find ways to make it better. But I, I have a hard time letting go of like the creative portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have been noted as being a control freak. So I definitely understand where you're coming through on that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I am the control freak in the band for sure. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're on the same page. What totally irrelevant. What is your sign? What's your Zodiac? I'm a Libra. Oh, hey, Libra, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Aries. Uh, me and the uh, Diego saying earlier, the, the other owner, we're both Aries. So you can, <laughs> can imagine how that goes. Well, we have a group full of Virgos. And so what's going on around here? Which is good, though, because usually Virgos offset the, the Aries energy. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's too funny. So is, is there anything else that you'd like to mention that um, I may have overshot? Because That's just what I do. I'm kind of oblivious to things. Um, not that I can think of. We covered a lot of ground, I think. Uh, 2023 is going to be pretty busy for us. I think we're going to be trying to expand um, our live shows out further and wider. Um, we definitely want to come to your area. We want to make it down to the south. If we can maybe play some like New York in those areas too. Just try to get out there as far as we possibly can and keep doing what we're doing heck yeah that's pretty ironic because we do have uh quite a few connections in the south because we all southern me anyway <laughs> we're based out of here uh awesome. diego is out from california you said you played out there some and we do have uh our fellas from uh squatch in the den uh squatch in the pit <laughs> in new york so that's really fun uh but yeah everybody make sure to hit them up on their socials like i said here's the, the link tree so you can get to all the correct ones because it's preacher in being um you don't want to go well you might want to go find the other uh religious and things like that but we want the fun stuff we want you to go find their music uh so in here you can look them up hit their socials give them some you know big love follow shares all that and that way you can hear all the new music and also catch where they're going to be on their tours and shows so you don't miss out on that and of course, they're playing. They're playing. They are spinning, playing. I can mush words here on the station. You know, radio is on radionetwork.com. You can go to our website for that, um, and also listen to them on our station, either on that website or all of our new, not new. One of them's new. Roku TV. Roku. Roku. I, you can tell we're getting to the end of the night because nothing's <laughs> coming out of my mouth right. We have the new platform on Roku TV uh, with the app there. And then also, of course, the other free streaming apps on Soundgarden and Live 365, where you can check out them spinning on there as well and all the other great rock music that we play. I 
am so glad that you got to come speak with me today. Uh, really hope we can do it again soon with the rest of the band, just to meet y'all in general. Uh, great that y'all are so busy, though. Again, it's a great problem to have. So I, I expect great things coming from y'all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having us or oh, having, no having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. You, you, can let, you can let them see it, and that way they can tell how if we did terrible or not. <laughs> <laughs> Represent them correctly. But definitely, we'll have you on anytime. We really appreciate you coming and chatting with us. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem, hon. All right, everyone. This is Stan from Preacher. Make sure, again, to go check out their socials and hear them here playing on the Asylum Radio. See you later. Thank you.